So it looks like the Ace Family home has officially been sold. You guys are probably asking yourselves, who would go and buy this house? Not only was it foreclosed, but it was built so poorly, it was pretty much falling apart. The best way I can describe it is if you gave a toddler a crayon and asked them to draw a house. And of course, some social media stars end up purchasing the home because who's going to buy a house that's in such poor shape? The infamous Ace Family Estate, which was foreclosed on last year, is now in the hands of a couple more influencers who actually got it for a heck of a deal. Sources connected to the sale tell TMZ, so they got some sources, Austin and Catherine McBroom's one-time mega property, which is comprised of nearly two acres of land and essentially three houses spanning over 13,000 square feet, was sold on Friday for a pretty penny. Originally, the house was put on the market for $12.9 million, but the Stokes twins actually purchased it for 9.2, and these are the new owners of this home. So here they are. Honestly, I think I've heard of the Stokes twins, but like, do I really know them? Honestly, I, I really don't. Like, I really don't. I'm not even trying to act like, you know, the Mariah Carey, like, oh, I don't know her. As for the new homeowners, our sources tell us twin brother YouTubers Alan and Alex Stokes, who have 13.2 million subscribers on YouTube and 30 million followers on TikTok, were the lucky fellas who bought this home, which I hope they've got some extra money to put some work into it. But interestingly enough, TMZ brings up their financial situation. No word on their financing, which is kind of important. The reason we're bringing this up is because the McBroom family's financial situation came under scrutiny during their time in this massive crib. They bought it in 2019 for about $10 million, and they... <laughs> To pay for it, they got $9 million in loans, so really they had none of the money, which they eventually defaulted on because they couldn't afford this house. As we started to learn about the foreclosure situation, they suddenly started to deny that this was happening, that their house was going under foreclosure, and that they weren't paying their bills. They ended up blaming everyone else for their problems. Let's go ahead and take a look at the new owners. So here's Alan Stokes on um, Instagram. He's got 6.1 million followers. Uh, and, oh, wow, he's with Tom, Tom Holland, but he hasn't posted in 18 weeks. Here's their YouTube channel. It looks like they do a bunch of kind of like prank videos, uh, challenge videos. They get a lot of views, millions and millions of views, which is good for them because they're making a lot more money than the Ace family is because if they're hitting 16 million views per video, 10 million views per video, that's like $100,000. Uh, the Ace family, they're hitting 1.1 million if they're lucky. Ooh, and it looks like they've got another channel where they've got 3.4 million subscribers where they post their shorts. So these brothers are pretty successful. I'm just not too sure why they would want this mansion. I mean, it, obviously it looks really pretty. It looks like it's an Apple store turned into a home or something. I don't know, you know, it, it's it's got the modern look. Everything's gray, everything's white. But again, like there are so many issues with this home from the pool to the gas situation. So much they're gonna have to deal with. As for the Ace family, they did post a new video, as they should, because they've got this event they need to promote. They should be posting videos every day trying to promote this event. And oh, look, here's the video that they recently posted. Um, I'll probably pull my thumbnail from this video. Anyways, so uh, I do want to bring up briefly what has happened to two of my recent videos that were removed from my YouTube channel. So the Ace family actually sent me a legal letter a cease and desist because i made some videos about their ace fest if you guys don't know what the ace fest is it is a an event that the ace family is throwing and i've made a couple of videos citing another youtuber madcaster in my videos pretty much um honestly taking what madcaster did his research and just kind of like resharing it in my videos and you know of course giving madcaster a shout out but um they did legally reach out to me and had me remove the two videos. They want me to issue a retraction. Girl, we're going to need a lot of D. We're going to need it spelt out because I don't issue retractions unless you're going to prove to me that what I said was completely false. Because one thing I can't get over right now is that... T 
tickets for this event just went on sale again. They are telling me I'm the reason why their ticket sales have slowed down. Not H3's video with over a million views. Not every other YouTuber's videos with millions of views. Uh, my videos didn't even do that well. But I'm the reason why their ticket sales are slowing. For a sold out event. They told us the event sold out. And then a week after that, they have a lawyer come after me saying, you slowed down the ticket sales. Well, brother... That doesn't quite add up. How am I, how am I the one at fault for slowing down the ticket sales of your event that is sold out? If the event was in fact sold out, then there is no slowing of ticket sales because the tickets have been sold. Do you see what I'm saying? And um, I can't go and say that this event isn't a scam because it hasn't happened and there hasn't been any proof. Like if they would provide me something that would you know, make everything I've said wrong, then of course, I mean, I, I only want to put out what's right, but I'm not going to go and put out a video or retraction when I don't 100% know that this event isn't a scam. And how are you going to, again, how are you going to tell me I slowed down ticket sales when tickets sold out? Tickets sold out? What do you mean I slowed down? The, the tickets have done, we're done. We're at capacity. So I don't know. I'm a little bit frustrated when it comes to that. And um, I mean, I I might share the letter soon. We'll see. Honestly, I've got my own lawyers. If they really want to go and try to sue me for defamation, sue me for the loss of their for their Ace Family Festival that hasn't even happened yet. How are you going to come and sue me for an event that didn't do successful and the event hasn't even happened yet? How are you going to come and sue me for messing up your event that literally has not taken place? I also just want to know, like, did H3 get their cease and desist? Because they posted a video, a long video, millions of views, where they say Ace Fest is a scam. Where's their cease and desist? Like, can we please get H... Also, uh, yeah, whatever. Can we just please get, like, some support out here? Because they're always just trying to come for me. They're always trying to come for me. And it's very frustrating. But it's okay, because I stand up for myself. And honestly... I comply. I took to I took the two videos down, but a retraction. A retraction? Mm -mm. Not going to happen. But that's all I have for today's video. My microphone actually cut out right here, but let's go ahead and open today's PO box package item. Hey Sloan, my name is Brandy and I've been watching your videos for some time now. You know what I always think is so funny? Brandy did say this when people are like, I've been watching your videos for years. I'm like, I've been doing it for two years. I mean, I guess years, plural, the two years. But someone once was like, I've been watching you for four years. I was like, girl, I've been doing this for two years and like, what, five months? Anyways, <laughs> um, your dedication to research and speaking on topics that some might be too afraid to discuss. Oh, oh, your dedication to researching and speaking. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Um, I watch and listen to each of your videos while cooking, working out, and while making candles for my small business. Philip Brand. Phil Brand? Phil Brand. Candle Co. I've included my favorite scents. Pina. Oh my gosh, which I'm so excited. Pina, because I love Pina Colada. For you to try. I hope you keep up the great work, and I'll continue to support you every step of the way. Aw, oh, Brandy. And I'll list everything below from their brand. It looks like we've got a smaller candle right here. And it, oh my gosh, it already smells so good. Oh, it is so fresh. And it's got a wood, like wood tip thing too wood uh wick wood tip oh no um and then we've got what is oh, i think this is just packaging the packaging actually came really well of pina colada like more than anything especially living in florida that's what i would drink on the regular oh uh, smells so good pina it's not too sweet oh it's got like a little bit of a almost a christmas vibe Wow, I love this. Definitely go and check out their brand below. This candle's so nice, so sweet. Would be a perfect gift. Look at that. Wow. Thank you guys so much. Leave a comment what you think about this situation. In the comments below, what do you think about the legal situation? And I'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.